Hey, Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Let me first say a few prayers for auspiciousness. Om Agyanati Mirandasya Agyananjana Salakaya Chakshuram Militamya Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Shimate Bhaktivedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine <coughs> Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Garadara Shiva Sadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Pancha Kalpata Rubyas Chan Kripa Sindhu Vya Eva Chan Titanam Pavane Bhyo Welcome, Ragunat Bhakti Prabhu. Raganuga. What is that? Raganuga, okay. <laughs> Raganuga, he was very early on in Chen now came to China quite some time ago and he's now in Vrindavan. That's an interesting uh, template he has or he broke his window. I think his camera is broken. <laughs> Looks like a template. Okay, anyway. So today I wanted to share a few of my realizations even though not very broad. Um, hope it will um, help somebody. Hope it will give some inspiration. So when when I was in my teenage years, and I was starting to wake up, I was getting sobered by the the world of nowadays, and uh, you know it wasn't wasn't a nice experience. I, I kind of realized it's a big game, this world. Everybody is playing a role. Everybody is uh, trying to to do something. Everybody is, you know, having his own things in, in his mind. And it's not easy, actually. It's not easy to, to understand what is what. There is so much noise in the world nowadays especially there are so many expectations from around us from our family from society there are our own opinions so many doubts you know the environment in which we we've been living city the school the teachers our friends, everybody is, you know, is bringing his own weight. So it's it's kind of difficult to to understand. Atatsu Brahma Jigyasa. That's what uh, the Vedanta Sutra begins with. This is when human life starts, when we use the the human faculty, which is the the most developed intellect the rational aspect so the human beings we can ask questions who am i what is all this about what is this experience uh what does it actually mean to live this life you know everybody is, this life is actually a great mystery it's not it's not so easy to figure out um, because of this, these distractions and because of the complexities of the modern world, like I was explaining. 
So <clears throat> when I was in that situation, you know, I was getting sobered up and I started realizing that around me, there are kind of two major classes of people. Um, there are people who are existing. They're just existing, you know. They are just pushing through the day, going to bed, and then the next day comes again, and then just trying to keep the bare minimum to maintain life and soul together, as it is said in the scriptures. But there are also other people who seems that they are riding the the wave, you know, they, they're surfing through life. And so many gifts are coming their way. So many it seems that for some people life life is so exciting, you know, they just realize themselves and they are uh, it seems it seems that they're doing something substantial. So I don't know if, if you usually do this. Can I can I ask the audience to to respond? Can yeah. I ask a question? Yeah, you can even pick on individuals. Squeeze yeah, I, I would like to ask you, your devotees and guests, what does it mean? So we have a class of people who is existing. What what does it mean to to exist? And what does it mean to live on the other side? I think somebody, therefore I am. <laughs> if somebody can uh, can respond by saying some characteristic, for example, of a person who is just existing. Hare Krishna, sorry I was late. Um, Hare Krishna, sorry to be late. No problem. Um, so what remind me the question so what's the difference between someone yeah so like i said there are i realized there are two major groups of people people who are just existing who are barely you know going through the day and keeping um keeping body and soul together just you know stitching it up going through the routine and there are people who are kind of living their life, you know, they're living an exciting life, they're having success, they're enjoying more, and they, they have achievements. So, mm. um, what is the characteristic that from of somebody who is just existing? What would you say? Think about it. I think, well, there's just the different levels of consciousness and okay perhaps also to do with the modes of nature some people are more in ignorance and passion some people are more in passion okay. that people in more passion they have more clear ideas perhaps okay. to do with intelligence level of intelligence as well level of intelligence so different consciousness lower consciousness higher consciousness yeah but not okay. even just within the material kind of mm -hmm. realm material level yeah i'd say that's something um we're looking at now at the the basic level you know at the the basics yeah and i think guidance education guidance is that, education yeah it's or a factor it... so if your parents or society or teachers or mentors or if you don't have people like that in your life then they might not be encouraging you to do certain mm -hmm. activities the with question, your life the question is what what is the characteristic of a person who is just existing well you can't just exist can you you have to be doing something you can't be still what does it mean to be to be on that platform to just You're exist you just yeah. exist so what, what what are the characteristic of somebody who is existing in comparison to somebody who is living you getting my point 
And there's more purpose between the existing person and the person who's just, sorry, between the person who's living and the person who's just existing. They have more of a purpose. Yes. yes that's, that's a characteristic. Point. Anybody else want to add, maybe? Prabhus? I was supposed to prepare a um, uh, presentation, but I didn't have time. That would have been easier. Chutan, I'm just saying it's almost like a sleeping state. I think according to the teacher, it describes it almost like a sleeping state. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anybody else wants to say something? Uh, I think, you know, uh, variety is the spice of life. So everybody has to make a living. So that is something very common. So through relationships, they may go for some adventures. They would, some people add more life to their life. If I'm not wrong in saying this, we have to add life to our life. Everybody is alive. Everybody is existing. Mm -hmm. Some have more a boredom kind of life, monotonous routine. They don't yeah. uh, have, you know, variety. So by adding variety, going for vacations, adventures, having relations, friends like that, you add more of a life to your life. Okay, the, the question is, what is the characteristic of a person who is just existing? So that's maybe something that he can he can do to improve, but what is what is his current state actually um, telling us? Like if you see a person who is just existing in comparison to a person who is just who is uh who's been successful who is living that is the question comes across as a little uh perhaps unthinking thinking that's what so, you're saying think comes across as unthinking unthinking yeah, if they're just existing. You know, we need to... They're not thinking, they're just existing. Absence of thought. Absence of thought. Yeah, yes, yeah, that's that's a good one. You know, people nowadays, many people, they, they don't think about it. They're just going the routine, like I said. If they're, the, if they're identifying with their deadly, senses. The deadly mechanical routine. So they are identifying with their senses and they're just going for it. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, going with the flow, you know, instead of finding your flow. Inertia, you know, people who are under the inertia, under the tamagun. People who are existing, they are just surviving. Have you ever observed this phenomenon that some people are just keeping the bare minimum? They're just surviving their lives instead of thriving. Like you know, human life, human life is meant to expand, is, is meant to, um, to have abundance, to have success. We're not like the animals. So people who are living, they're thriving. People who are existing are seeking security. You know, they're always concerned, oh, how am I going to uh, go uh, go on with such a small salary, you know, and the government and this, you know, always afraid. But people who are living, they, they're seeking discovery. They're seeking new horizons. People who are existing, like we said, are mechanical, but people who who are living, they are creative and flexible. People who exist, they just try to go through the day and fulfill their basic necessities of eating, sleeping. Um, you know, not much enthusiasm there. But people who live, they are looking forward to the day. They are excited. Oh, next day is coming, you know, let I'm going to be doing my, my dream work. I'm going to be studying the scriptures, whatever the, the person is uh, engaged with. I'm going to maintain my beautiful family and so forth. 
people who are existing, they are looking for an escape from the problems. You know, they are constantly trying to solve these basic problems. But people who are living, they they have nothing to escape for from because they they're not on that platform. They don't have these these problems. And life is tiring for people who exist. You know, it's it's like you're having this huge burden on top of you. You're like, oh my God, what am I going to do? But for for other people, life is energizing. The more you pursue your passion, the more you uh, try to give out, to serve. And the more energy, the more love you you uh, you receive back. Do you guys agree with me? Some of the characteristics of this type of people. No? You got my point? So, so what it means is that basically at one point in, in our lives, we are all, um, it doesn't mean that, that basically it's like a stereotype that there are only people from, from this section and there are only these people. It's like these, these qualities, they are, they're present in, in all of us. They can, they can intertwine, you know, we can also have some of them some of them might not be present or you know over a period of time they're changing um so we are all going through these stages in our life and we are all exploring and coming to to new realizations but um there is one um one pattern that occurs again and again if we if we look in 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 other successful people's lives that um sooner or later a call to adventure comes an opportunity a situation or a person an event something happens and then there is um <clears throat> there is this call for adventure there is this call to go beyond of our own current state. There is a call for going out of our comfort zone. And it is said that into that unknown place, 99% of human potential is residing outside of our comfort zone on the hero's journey. So if somebody wants to achieve his full potential, um, he has to, he or she has to basically step out from, from this um, pattern and dive into the unknown. So the first, the first thing that comes to us, to everybody, will be this call to adventure. Something that arises, which is an opportunity to, to progress. And uh, it's, uh, it's interesting because actually what happens is that we can also observe it in our lives, like I observed it in my life, that 99% of the people they ignore this call to adventure. They ignore it or they're just lazy. They're scared of what's going to happen. They're concerned about the public opinion. So many things. Um, but on the other side, the people who, who embark those are the people who basically are raised to the challenge. 
when that challenge comes, when that opportunity comes, then they they take it up. And then when one embarks on this great adventure of life, what happens is that there is the next stage, which is the the road of trials. So when the hero embarks on this journey, naturally, there are so many obstacles. There are so many discouragements. There are people who are trying to bring us down, people who are trying to uh, make us uh, come back to our original place of inertia, stagnation, fearful living, and so forth. But the hero, he realizes at one point that if a path doesn't have obstacles, probably it doesn't lead anywhere good, anywhere significant. So we, we, must, we must have obstacles. We, we must experience these difficulties in our life. Just like Bhaktisiddhanta Maharaj said, those who are favored by God, their path is set by thorns. So the hero continues on this journey with so many difficulties. But then, after many battles, then he arrives to a threshold. And that is the sweet spot. After that threshold, there is a new way of living. And on that threshold, there are many apprehensions. There are many insecurities, you know, because... After that step, there is no, there is no return back. So many insecurities, so many, the mind, you know, always, always doubting, always trying to, um, to think about the secure position, to think about surviving and just going with the, the old. But the hero continues. Because, because he has faith in discovering something amazing on the other side. And then, as he goes forward, what happens is that there is a miracle. A supernatural aid comes in a form of mentors, coaches, even fans or good friends genuine well-wishers and as he continues on this journey there, there are always innumerable temptations uh, challenges doubts distractions have i made the right decision maybe i should go back but then at one point after so many obstacles then there is the, the point of, um, of no return. Beyond that point, there is no, no going back. Because so many things have changed. So many obstacles have been traversed. So the hero continues on. And then in the end, there is a great victory. There is... Um, a revelation, a great gift or achievement, a connection. The fruit of the journey, the journey of the hero. And then what happens is that the hero comes back with that gift and he shares it with, with everybody else. And there is prosperity. So basically... What I was trying to explain is that if we want to go on this journey, if we want to go from existing, which is our default status in life, to living the dreams of our life, these are some of the ingredients that we have to um, implement in our life. If we are to discover the, the full potential the totality of our existence. And this is very interesting because we 
if we look at the Bhagavad Gita, which was written 5,000 years ago, still, it is the perfect example for us of the journey of the hero. Um, Arjuna is the hero who embarks on this unknown journey with so many obstacles. And Krishna, he is the supernatural aid, as, as we all know. All the events which are preceding and succeeding the Bhagavad Gita, all these are, are the part of, of Arjuna's call to adventure, the great adventure of life. So as we as we all know, from what I see, oh, the audience here, everybody is at least to a good extent um, familiar with uh, Bhagavad Gita and Mahabharata. We know how there are the the two factions. There is the Kuru dynasty, which gets divided into Pandavas and uh, the Kauravas, the good and the evil. And so at one point in this great um, epic, there is the, the famous gambling match between, between the two factions. And in that gambling match, the, the Pandavas, they lose, and Draupadi becomes unrobed, undressed publicly by the Kauravas. And at that point, for Arjuna, that is exactly the, the point where he receives this call to adventure. A, an adventure to... Um, to bring justice and to rectify the mentality of all the other miscreants. And Arjuna, he he takes it up and he undergoes many, many trials and tribulations. He, he even comes to the threshold when the battle of Kurukshetra is about to, to begin. So we all know he requests uh, Krishna, his chariot driver, to drive in the middle to evaluate the situation. There was no other way to solve this issue with the opposition except war. And there, there he is, standing in the middle of the threshold of the war, and he's questioning whether he should go from the known to the unknown. That is a great, great step. And in our life also, that is the turning point. That is the twist of fate. And then what happens? The supernatural aid in the form of Krishna comes to him and speaks the Bhagavad Gita. The Bhagavad Gita guides Arjuna through all these weaknesses and doubts that he has. He surrenders to Krishna. Oh, Krishna, please instruct me. I have lost all, all of my composure. I am not sure what to do. Shall I go to the forest? Shall I become a beggar? Um, if I win the fight, everything will be stained with blood. How am I going to enjoy the world afterwards? A kingdom stained with blood. So many doubts, so many um, difficulties. A very, very difficult situation. But then, Arjuna, he listened to, to Krishna's advice and he fought the war. And then, in the middle of, of that uh, whole event, then there was the, the point of no return. Then they realized that they have to go all in if they are to win the war. So they, they went for it, 
for it. And finally, there was a great victory. And then they came back to rule the world in great prosperity. That was the outcome of listening to the instructions of Krishna. So, this book, the Bhagavad Gita, is actually not just a religious book, not just um, a spiritual book, but it is actually a manual of life. This is actually a very practical knowledge which can help anybody in his own situation. This is uh, the book which will give us inspiration to go on this journey, which will create uh, such a drastic, such a great change in our life. And it will bring so much prosperity and wisdom. So just the conversation between Krishna and, and Arjuna and uh, their own, uh, his own doubts um, and so forth. But actually, this is um, this is our own situation. All these discourses, all these questions and answers, they are all relating to our own current situation. No matter who we are, where we are, what age, creed, religion, sex, it doesn't matter. Because this is the... Um, this is the science of the soul, which is beyond. So, what we live, what um, sorry, what we're seeing nowadays on the on the TV news is that the prices are raising, and the cost of living, the cost of uh, existing actually, because the price to pay for the cost of living is different. So the cost of, of existing, it, it is constantly raising. Prices, gas, salaries, staying the same. So this is the cost of existing. But the cost of living is to be paid in a different way. You cannot pay it with money. One has to pay with courage. One has to pay with um, perseverance, with um, tolerance, humility. This is what will make a great change in our life. And embark on the hero's journey, which will um, help us to develop our full potential which will help us to realize ourselves, not just spiritually, but also materially. Some people, they think that, oh, I don't have time now. I have my family. I have work. I don't have time to, to practice, you know, little, very little time. Or I'm too young, you know. I have my own situation. I have to study now. I'll do it when I'm older. And then when I'm older, oh, I'm old now. I don't have any more capacity. You know, intelligence is not there. Um, but no, actually, this is for everybody, no matter. No matter the position, everybody sh should take it up in his own life and try to understand his situation and, and move to the progressive, um, progressive model. Of living so if we look intimately if we try to to study the Bhagavad Gita if we try to analyze the questions um, and the answers of Krishna we will we will solve all of our problems Bhagavad Gita is the solution of our problems um, spiritually and of course materially so they all go at the same time. Our Sanatana Dharma, our eternal occupation, but then also our Svadharma, our material 
situation in which we're finding ourselves currently. Matter depends on spirit. Whenever we fulfill our um, spiritual needs, then everything else follows. We have to make time. It's not that I don't have time. You have to make time. Because if you make time for spiritual practices, for transcendental knowledge, then actually everything transforms. Your life transforms. And then there is so much time for family. There is so much time for traveling, for um, hanging out with friends, for doing your passion, you know. As a human beings, we shouldn't be doing things that we don't like. I mean, of course, always some austerity has to be taken, but to be always constantly working a job that one doesn't like, to be in a situation where one is struggling in the city, working for so many hours, or just being fearful to not... Um, pursue that inner desire that inner <clears throat> it's always been there that uh, that shouldn't be left at that that has to be explored that has to be brought in front and, uh, and then the supernatural aid will come and help us our mentors and so forth so these are a few things that I wanted to share Dear devotees, um, if there are some comments from your side or questions, if you want to ask, um, I see you are all um, um, already probably embarking on the journey. This is this is mostly a lecture for newcomers. So um, I don't know if it was of any use. Anybody want to say something? All yours, Rahul. Huh? Rahul's going to say something. Uh, thank you so much. Um, you know, um, if I am not mistaken, I heard a similar lecture by His Holiness Sam Bhagwan Keshav Maharaj. Yes, uh, I took it from uh, It was like, you know, repeat of, uh, but everybody has their own way of sharing. So... Yes. He shares about his life like this. He left the normal career prospects and he went uh, the adventure and all. So, yeah. I mean, nothing wrong in all these things. He's a renunciant and he's talking like adventure in the monk life and all. So, I mean, of course, I was just thinking about uh, making a career change, going abroad for education. It was sort of an adventure. Then I came to Mayapur. It was really not, not something I had planned. And now I'm somewhere else. So, I mean, it's really life is like an adventure. I would agree. Um, and I need to be courageous and have faith in Krishna. Just another aspect towards this. Um, you know, it's like said, uh, Material world is like chewing the chewed. Puna puna charvat, uh, charvaranam. Suppose like people want to go to moon, Mars, exploration. There's a lot of, you know, passion in them. They really want it. We can feel it. Even the governments are spending millions of dollars. Billions of dollars are being spent. But sh should we not just take the lesson? Like I may be doing... Uh, I may try like this. I may try to go this way, have this uh, relations, friends, do this, that. But can we take a lesson from Bhagavatam, which is saying like it's all chewing the chewed and just focus on, uh, you can say, spiritual life, hearing, chanting, make that your singular goal and just spread the message to others. Uh, is that also a possible message or am I misinterpreting and it's like based on individual. Some have more risk appetite. Some don't have that risk appetite. It's the call for adventure for everyone as per Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Gita or for few. 
Okay, so let me see if I understood properly. For some yeah. people, the call for adventure is going to Mars or realizing themselves in the world. And for some people, um, is spiritual life. Is yeah. it, uh, what it what is right? Shall we go for our material aspirations or shall we go full-fledged spiritual? This is a Thank very, you. very, very good question. No doubt. Um, we have, in this world... Fortunately, there, there are so many variety of people, varieties of consciousness and intelligence. Um, so many things are there to explore. Life is very subtle. You know, it's not just eating, sleeping, you know. So many things. People are um, trying to enjoy in so many ways. And then there are people who, can't, who get sober up because chewing the chewed <clears throat> so they go for spiritual life which becomes even more variegated because spirituality is even more variegated one goes deeper and deeper exploring the relationship with krishna and so forth um so we try to as as preachers um, we try to analyze the situation and we try to elevate the person from from the position where he is now so for many people um to, to to tell them about spirituality directly to tell them about god to tell them that um life is you know chapala sukha chewing the chewed so forth it might might not be effective because they are not they're not at that point in their life so we have to meet them where they are if we want to take them somewhere and krishna says very expertly in the in the shrimad bhagavatam akama sarva kama moksha kama uh what was that verse you remember it urugai akama moksha kama sarva kama that whoever has um sarva kama unlimited desires or whoever wants um moksha or whoever just wants to become person associate with krishna these are usually the uh, the types of uh, of people, the three major types of people, the devotees, the those who, who want salvation, and people who just want to enjoy the world. All of them should come to Krishna. They should come to um, to uh, to the supreme person to to ask to to ask from him to fulfill his desires. So it's okay, you know, if we want to become rich, that's fine, as long as we go to Krishna. If we want to, you know, um, get away from our painful situation, if we want to um, get liberation as the jnanis, we should still go to Krishna. And if we want to become pure devotees, of course, we have to engage in devotional service to Krishna. So Krishna, he is equally disposed to everybody, even to the greatest demons. Krishna loves everybody and is giving equal opportunity to everybody. But everybody, um, but, um, everybody approaches him in a different way. So some people, they have to go through um through that um that stage in their life where they they fulfill their desires materially maybe maybe they want a family maybe they want to attain success in the world so but if they do it through uh through realizing that god is is the one who is providing then they're they're uh, um they're the fulfillment of their desire when they achieve that success that will purify it and it will no longer be there um rather than just trying to work in the world on 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 our own um that will never remove this anartha so that is one one consideration and uh, just like i i um i was really inspired by by maharaj by by the lecture that he gave that's why i, I took it up because I, I had a similar experience in my life. 
and the way he is presenting the Bhagavad Gita, he's making it very interesting and very logical. It's like a cutting edge for exactly the situation uh, which we find in in our world nowadays. You know, people they're they're looking for coaching, they're looking to improve themselves, they're looking to get away from suffering. So you see, he's describing the hero's adventure, um, which is our own situations, um, and. Even if somebody is wishing to go to the moon or just to become an Olympic champion or just to have a lot of money, if he turns to the Bhagavad Gita, to the eternal principles, which are actually the principles that apply even to material life, then eventually he will develop faith and he will become purified and he will come to the point of understanding um spiritual life and chanting and karma reincarnation and so forth so this is my answer to you i don't know if i'm covering everything if you have any more doubts or you want to add something and thank you so much prabhuji if uh, you are okay could you share what kind of adventures you are having in monk life i think uh, your life is more restricted, uh, if I'm not mistaken, but maybe you get to meet more people and I'm not sure if you travel a lot, but uh, I think monk life is more renounced and it's just inner exploration than outward. Yeah, often often we think that restrictions and regulations are uh, are limiting or removing our freedom, but actually is the opposite. Prabhupada called them the four regulative principles of freedom. Freedom from suffering, because there is so much suffering in, uh, in trying to enjoy this world. So to be able to, to stay away from that, to renounce it, that's, that's a great freedom. To be able to serve uh, Krishna and the devotees, that's a great, great satisfaction, great peace. Um, in my life, I can relate to this story of Maharaj because I also, like I was explaining in my teenage life, I was enjoying unrestrictedly. I was living the European dream. You know, they have the American dream, but I was living the European dream in a way. Uruguay was living the Australian dream. We know that. But... Um, at one point, all that variegatedness and freedom actually led me to utter frustration. And I started to sober up. And I realized that people around me are not happy. And I'm not happy as well. I was also just existing and just being pushed by uh, the, the waves of material existence. And then I had a... I had an inquiry. I started looking for deeper answers. You know, why am I suffering? Even though I'm doing the right things, I'm following the stereotypes. And then I opened myself to the Eastern philosophies of yoga, meditation, Zen, whatnot. I was exploring Ayurveda, all these kind of things. Um, and then, um, yes, at one point, I was I was living with my family, and at one point. They were they were limiting me. They were trying to keep me there, you know, with them. And they were trying to impose their own beliefs and how I'm supposed to function in the world. But I was uh, becoming more and more rebellious because I didn't want to pursue that. And it was uh, I realized it's it was um, very subtle. It was uh, subconscious chains, you know, subconscious pressure. And at one point, I I felt like I'm just wasting my time. I'm just becoming like a vegetable if I'm living in, in this situation. So I just bought myself a backpack. And literally, I just went out with a bunch of friends. And I started traveling the world on foot and hitchhiking. And that was, that was kind of the, the breakthrough in my life. And a little bit after that, I met the devotees. And a great adventure unfolded. Long story short. Then I, as a monk, actually, I traveled 
all over Europe and India and many things happened. And now I'm here in New York. There was a plot twist. Now I came here and I'm serving in Prabhupada's favorite project. So that is, is very exciting. As our temple president likes to say, this is the biggest preaching field in the world. When you do a Harinam on the Brooklyn Bridge, back and forth, you're meeting all the nations in the world because everybody comes to New York, you know? So that's, that's something exciting, for example. And you have Columbia University, Princeton University. We went with Svayam Bhagavan Maharaj to Princeton University. I filmed it. It was very exciting. And yeah, like this. Very exciting life. Brahmachari life. Grihastas are also Brahmacharis in disguise. Everybody is a Brahmachari. So not sure about that. <laughs> huh? Nothing. I think Raghunuga, he had his hand. I don't know if he still want to ask to put it down. Raghunuga Prabhu. Uh, maybe he went to the toilet. <laughs> um, yeah, if anybody else want to share, guys. Mm. There he is, he's back. Haribo. Yes, Prabhu, you can speak. Yeah. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Haribo. Yeah, thank you so much for your the wonderful realization you shared with us from the beginning and also um opening up the scriptures to us. Um in the concluding part of your uh, message, you made mention that um, matter depends on the spirit for everything. So when we make time for spiritual activities, then everything falls in place. Now, my question is, um, we have nice sadhana. However, most often, we are not able to follow the sadhana we have made for ourselves. Now, what will you suggest that for my part I can do to follow my sadhana strictly? Because sometimes it puts me in anxiety, serious anxiety, that I'm not able to follow my own sadhana. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Very nice question. Thank you, Prabhu. I will tell you something more on the anxiety part. If you are in anxiety for your sadhana, Prabhu, that is good. That is not normal anxiety. That is spiritual anxiety. So please continue be, to be in anxiety to improve your, your sadhana. There's nothing wrong with that. Spiritual life doesn't mean that we will feel good and we'll, we'll be on the beach drinking our coconut juice and, you know, just enjoying life. Spiritual life, as, as I was explaining, is um, a hero's journey where there are so many tribulations, obstacles, uh, mind blockages, and people who are um, maybe envious of us, who are not helping us. Um, so, we have to go through all these things which are arranged by the uh, supernatural material nature for us to, to be purified. And um, yes, how to have a good sadhana? Um, many of us, we don't have the privilege of being in a holy place like Vrindavan or Mayapur or living in the temple uh, most of us, uh, we are in, in the world working, you know, family. Um, sometimes, you know, the wife is not a devotee or the kids are not devotees makes it even more complicated and distracting. What to do? Yeah, we have to, we have to see what, what the particular situation is 
and we have to start doing what we can do. Just like when new people are joining, you know, they're so entangled in their own situation that, you know, what can they do? So chant one round, read one page a day. So this is how they begin. This is what uh, what happens um, when somebody takes up, especially somebody who is just beginning, because, you know, many people, they're resuming their spiritual lives. But some people are just beginning, and for them is extremely difficult to chant even one round. So chant a little bit, listen to the kirtans on YouTube, read a little bit, you know, so read Prabhupada's small books. But the most important thing that we tell people that they have to follow is um, be consistent, do it every day. So if that consistency is there, if we're able to train our minds to be um, to be steady um, and we go on, miracles will happen. It is said that uh, it's scientifically proven there is a statistic that if you spend 20 minutes a day doing something for one year, that's that's 100 hours. If you do something for 100 hours a year, means you will become better at that thing, better than 95% of the people in the rest of the world. So that's powerful, you know. So even if we don't have our sadhana perfectly, if we maintain the consistency, if we do a little bit in the evening or a little bit in the um, morning, nevertheless, that will improve. And we have to, of course, seek expert advice. The spiritual master, he is the one who has been through it, seen it all, done it all even from previous lifetimes, like I was mentioning, elevated soul, and he can give us the expert, um, the expert advice on how to improve. But as a general rule, you know, if we are willing, and if we are surrendering to Krishna, prayer, very important, putting ourselves in a helpless position, crying for Krishna, this is very important because it's bringing a lot of humility to see Prahal Maharaj praying, explore, meditate on those prayers, Brahma's prayers. Um, so many prayers are there. We can meditate on these pastimes and, and also pray to Krishna in that mood. And Krishna will, will make miracles. You know, I, I know, like when I joined, for example, um, there was uh, Prabhu, the temple president. He was telling me, you know, some years ago, he has like five children. He doesn't have one. He doesn't have two, three, five children, you know. It's difficult to maintain one, one child nowadays. What to speak of five children. Mm -hmm. So he was, um, he was doing some work, some web design, whatnot, architect. I don't remember. He was struggling, was working for money, trying to maintain his family. But then he told me simply that, you know, Krishna, he took away my job. And now I'm not working anymore. Now I'm the temple president. He's just, he's just having fun. When I was there, he was just going around and organizing programs, meeting with the mayor and other important people and swamis and um, collecting uh, donations from the Hindu shops and cooking for the Sunday program, a lot of variegated, you know, very variegated lifestyle as a grihasta and his kids are growing up devotees. And that's what he told me, you know, Krishna took took away my job. Now I'm not working anymore. I'm, I'm just having fun. So like this, just it's a process of surrender, you know. Um, so we have to pray and surrender and seek advice be consistent. There, these are a few things that I can share. I don't know if that helps. I think he's speaking, but he's muted, maybe. Uruguay, can you unmute him? 
Thank you so much, Prabhu. Thank you so much, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah, I okay. think it's a good good place to wrap it up. Thank you, Matanga. Thank you, dear Uru guy. All yours Organized. to wrap it up. Yeah, my pleasure. I'm happy that you came and spoke. And thank you to all the nice people that came and attended. We had, yeah, I was surprised actually. So it's nice that we had. And we'll, we will have you back again if you would be kind to us. Of course, it's a pleasure for me. Yeah. So, yeah, if you wanted to say anything to conclude, otherwise we can finish the call. Yeah. I wanted to say that thank you for giving me this opportunity for speaking about the Holy Bhagavad Gita yeah. and Krishna. Yeah, it's a wonderful thing that we have and that we're a part of. So it's nice to share. And the is saying thank you, Matanga, for inspiring. Very nice to meet you. Who is that? Oh, yeah. Chitananda. Chitananda, bro. Nice to meet you. Very well. Nice to meet you nice as well. You. <laughs> it was nice really, really nice. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Oh, that was Mataji also. Yeah. And uh, I have to mention. I know the, the topic really really just uh, provoked me to and forced me for this session because I had adventures and I think I have been through a few adventures in the last couple of months. I'm in mm -hmm. now Holy Dham all the way from, uh, you know, I was, I'm in Australia usually because I live mm -hmm. there but uh, Krishna brought me here and I think uh, there's always a purpose behind everything, you know, whatever happens in your life. So I am enjoying this adventure now. And so many things happened in the last couple of months. But I feel that, you know, as long as you survive with Krishna's mercy, you can, you know, make your way. So I feel that way that, you know, every devotee is kind of a warrior as well. It's not easy. So as you yeah. said, I love that. Yes, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not easy that if you are a devotee, you won't have challenges. Most of the challenges are in, uh, actually comes in a devotee's life, I would say. Yes. It's never easy. If it's easy, everybody would do it. Mm -hmm. What's the point of pursuing the easy path? We were just having a conversation, transcendental conversation with the temple president yesterday. And he was he was emphasizing that, you know, it's like when you go to the gym and you're training your muscles, if you want to increase muscle mass, if you want to become stronger, you have to feel the burn. You have to push yourself beyond the limits. And that's painful, you know, you have to feel the burden, you have to be consistent. And that that is how you will you will grow, will become stronger. So in the same manner, in spiritual life and even in material life, successful people, they go through so many tribulations. Um, we have to feel we have to feel the burn. We have to feel like um uncomfortable in our daily lives. And there is always the next level, the next, next, next. And you're never there. You're never there. It's, it's an ongoing journey. So until we arrive to that point where we become, as Fine Bhagavan Maharaj says, comfortable with the uncomfortable. Until we, we arrive at that point, you know, we have to really endeavor. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. That's really nice. Thank you so much, Prabhu, for coming enlightening us with your words. Thank you so much Urugya for organizing such a beautiful session. Right. Looking forward to it. Yeah, we see you regularly so you should all